grew up eating it and we all know how to make it until we have to make it. If you're looking to do what's right with strawberries or make your sister's husband jealous, then this one, my dear, is for you. Making jam is pretty straightforward. No extra pectin required. Yep, I'm the bearer of good news today. However, strawberries are very low in pectin, which is what makes the jam set. So if you want something that sets like a jelly, I'll leave a link down in the description for a recipe that includes pectin that'll stick to the ceiling. And for the biltong clan, what is a man that can make biltong, but he can't make jam? We start with fresh, clean strawberries. Yes, frozen works too. To that, we add sugar fresh lemon juice, we need it to activate the natural pectin in the fruit. Very important, zest the lemon first, we need it later. Wear or don't wear gloves, depending on how much you like sticky fingers. Or whether your manicure costs more than the average African salary. Anyway, you want to mix it all up and let it macerate. This is so the strawberries release their juice. Kinda what you do to your liver every time you jump into the rosé jane, or brandy or gin for that matter. Don't forget to fairly sexually lick your fingers but keep it family friendly, okay? Mm, I'm thinking margarita here. Cover it in plastic and say hi to our old friend Richard. Don't call him names, he gets extremely offended. He cries all night long. It's depressing to watch. Now let this sit at room temperature for an hour. You want to get a nice spacious pot or pan for this. Otherwise, tears may follow. Add the macerated strawberries to the pot and bring it to a boil. It needs to be a pretty steady boil, not spitting, but steady. If it's too slow, the jam will take too long to cook, and the color and flavor will be yucky yucky poo poo. As it boils, some foam will rise to the top. I like skimming it off, but it's optional. It's nothing criminal, simply air bubbles that may or may not go away as the jam cooks. It does, however, help if you plan to can this by preventing a false headspace measurement. Make sure to watch the jam every step of the way and stir often. No one likes burnt stuff, and no one likes cleaning that up. The aim is to keep the strawberries as whole as possible. As it boils, it will start to thicken. We need to cook it until it reaches 104 degrees Celsius or 220 degrees Fahrenheit. So you ideally use a thermometer, not your fingers, just in case it's not obvious. Thermometers are cheap as chips, link below as usual. Once the jam is done, you add the lemon zest. This is optional, but extremely necessary if you want to make your sister's husband jealous, or anyone for that matter. Canning, or jarring in this case, is the best storage option. Fill some sealable jars with boiling water. Remove the water after a minute and add the hot jam, leaving a bit of headspace. You see, there's the old headspace again. Seal immediately and place it in the fridge. Don't have to tell you what to use this for, but I need to. The old classic, peanut butter and strawberry jam sandwiches. I grew up loving it so much that I just had it for the first time again today after about 20 years. Still don't miss it, took one for the team and just did it for you guys. I used to butter the bread too, by the way. I highly recommend it. What is a scone without jam? It's a man that can make biltong, but he can't make jam. Scone recipe coming soon, FYI, as well as how to quickly make clotted cream. The whole shebang. Of course, my favorite, fluffy whipped cream cheese or Greek yogurt, or yogurt, however you want to say it. Jam and homemade granola. Kind of like a breakfast cheesecake kind of thing. Finally, let's not forget the classic, buttered toast and jam. The go-to British snack and breakfast with tea. No matter if you're on the dole, or paying it in with your 40% tax bill. It's still a lovely treat for your mouth hole.